You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike and this is an ink sample. This is Mont Blanc Irish Green. And this is a review that has been a long time coming. I, I'm sure I got a, rev uh, a sample of this from Anderson Pens. Uh, when they, they gave me like all the, uh, all the Mont Blancs back in the day. And as I remember, I used up the sample so quickly that I never got around to reviewing it. And I always felt bad about that, but I always kind of also forgot about it. So this sample actually came from a friend of Audrey's who gave it to her. They're pen pals. And sometimes they swap ink samples and that's fun. Uh, and then I needed an ink to put in this pen. This is the Y Studio classic, uh, fountain pen desk pen. Uh, this is the copper one. And I needed an ink that would go really well on this pen. So... Uh, that's why I'm doing this review now. So this is Mont Blanc Irish Green, and it is a, an ink that everybody sort of points to, and they say like, "Hey, what's your favorite? Uh, what's your favorite green ink?" People are like, "Irish Green." And there's a solid reason for that. This is a very nice looking green. It is uh, not blue. It's not got like those weird brown tones that I like so much in green inks. It is a straight up green ink and it actually works super well in uh, in this fountain pen, which has a medium Schmidt nib, which is a uh, pretty generic medium nib, honestly. Like it's uh, neither super wet nor super dry. It's, it's great. And this ink is maybe on the like maybe medium wet, but probably just solidly medium. This is a very medium sort of ink. Uh, performance on copy paper and stuff. I've got a little bit of bleed on the 20 pound. This is the 20 pound Staples copy paper. Uh, this is of course 30% recycled and 100% um, kind of garbo. So if you uh, if you look at the back, there is a little bit of bleed, but even on this kind of crap paper, you don't really have any of the problems that you might get uh, with other inks. So that's cool. I see a little bit Maybe a few little feathers, maybe a little bit of spread, but again, this is terrible paper. So on anything better than, I mean, on terrible, it's fine. On anything better than terrible, it's real nice, including this Rhodia paper that I have this on. Um, it does have a little bit of uh, shading, uh, so that's a, that's a sick quality of this ink. Not a huge amount. It looks, I think, fairly steady throughout, but you get a little bit of shading from the, uh, the dark to the light green, especially on coated papers like this one, like you can see in this from this from right there. Okay, um, the only problem with this ink is that for a very standard green green ink, it's actually a little bit on the expensive side, I think. A uh, 60 mil bottle for uh, 24 bucks. It's not terrible. I think that's that's an okay price, and the bottle is cool. So, you know, you got that going for it as well. But um, this is a very solid ink, and I think uh, suitable for pretty much all uses uh, when you don't have to be extra serious. All right, let's put some water on this. Let's do a little bit of chromatography. Let's look at it next to some other inks. I've got a lot of green inks to show this next to because I've got a lot of green inks, and I like that. Let's put this on. Let's put some of this that's on the words. Cool, cool, cool. A little shake and a shimmy. All right, we have shaked, we have shimmied. Now let's blot. Uh, I've had a couple of questions through Instagram and uh, uh, YouTube about inks, and uh, like, hey, how does it stand up to running water? And I'm like, you know, I actually don't know. I never test ink that way because if you got like running water going over your ink, you got you got more problems. <laughs> like, I mean, that's a that's a problem. I do a drip test because like I'm more likely to be like carrying a glass of water and like I spill some and it sloshes or and I, I blot it up fairly quickly or like condensation or something. Um, so I think this is a, you know, for my uses, this is a more uh, useful, useful kind of test than running it underwater. But lots of people do those torture tests to so check those out. Uh, and the answer here is that it is not particularly water resistant. You do have some of the lines left over, um, but they look, there's like a bit of a gray uh, behind there instead of, you know, the green. So the green comes off almost entirely. I mean, look at that. That's just plain old green. A little bit of yellow in there too, maybe, but you get a little bit of gray left over. So not really water resistant. Although I think if you dropped water on this, you'd be able to read what you had left. It would just be kind of a gray. All right. Here's the chromatography. <laughs> Sorry, I have a phone call. I'm <laughs> person at the door. <laughs> I had somebody at the door and I totally said, oh, it's a phone call because who has people at the door? Anyway, um, so this is the chromatography here. And uh, I think it's a really interesting chromatography, actually. I dig this uh, this like gray down at the bottom, which is what you saw left over on the other sheet. And then the green up here is like a nice dark black streak at the top. So very interesting ink. Uh, definitely that gray comes through in the water wash. Okay. Um, so actually it might be kind of cool for art stuff. I don't know. If you're an artist, let me know if you've ever used this because that looks like a cool effect. All right. Uh, let's look at it on a couple of other papers and look at a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of color samples because I got a lot of greens here. Okay. So this is my Tomoe River ink journal here. 
And uh, there it is. This is Y Studios um, Classic Desk Pen. This guy with uh, the sink, which is uh, comes out a very nice medium green. A little bit of shading on here. Not a huge amount on the Tomoe River. I kind of expected maybe a little more shading on the Tomoe River than anything else. But it looks like it's pretty consistent here with everything else. Nice, bright, medium green. All right. And then... Uh, here it is in my Inky Fingers wheat straw paper. I really like these uh, notebooks. These are great. You can still get these over at uh, my friend uh, my friend Matt's site. Um, so this is the uh, the Irish green on here. <laughs> Actually, I shut this way too early. Or I, I don't know, brush my... It doesn't usually smear. It doesn't have a long dry time or anything. I just did that immediately after I wrote it. So pretty, pretty good. I think it looks really good on this paper. Maybe better than it does on the, uh, on the Tomoe River, but it's hard to say. Still dig it. Okay, let's look at a whole bunch of ink samples here. So here's medium green, uh, medium green, <laughs> Mont Blanc Irish green. Uh, and then like, I've got this whole fistful of things to look at. So this is Caran Ash Vibrant Green, which I think is fairly close, um, pretty close in price too, I wanna say, and uh, pretty nice looking. Caran d'Ache inks get overlooked, I think a lot, but they're very nice inks. And then here we have Robert Oster's uh, Evergreen. Let's go a little bit closer. There we go. Robert Oster's Evergreen, which is, I think, a little bit brighter than Irish Green, but definitely very, very close. Um, I'm not actually sure if they even make that. Robert Oster turns over ink so quickly that it's hard to even, it's hard to even keep track. Uh, and then we've got uh, Platinum's Mix-Free Leaf Green, another, uh, another set of inks that sometimes get overlooked, and that's the Platinum Mix-Free inks. I think they're actually very nice, and this Leaf Green is really good. We have another Robert Oster. This is uh, Emerald which is also, I think, pretty close, though maybe a little bit darker and a little bit more blue uh, than Irish Green is. We got one of the Giorban inks that I actually really like. I'm a little dubious about most of the Giorban inks uh, that I've tried because they tend to be like, it can be a little bit weird, but um, Lira Sauvage is very nice. Uh, definitely worth trying out. My friend Jim told me that I needed to try this one, and he was not wrong. That's a good ink. Check it out. Also, uh, Roaring Klingner's Verdura, which uh, I don't, I don't, I haven't used this in ages. It looks like I got it from an ink drop in 2012. So like, that's a throwback. Uh, but looks a little bit lighter. Uh, Roaring Klingner. I'm getting all these like brands that we don't use very much anymore. Roaring Klingner. Uh, I don't use G Herbano much at all, except for. Lyra Sauvage, which I really like. All right. And then we've got Monteverde's Yosemite Green, which is gorgeous. A little bit uh, lighter, maybe, than Irish Green, but very close. And then Ackerman number 27, uh, Bazundadin Vodagrone. Uh, something road green. I don't really know what that means, but um, there you go. I think this is a little bit on the lighter side. It definitely has more of a, a little bit of a sheen action. I've never actually used 27, I don't think. I need to dig that out and give it a try. Uh, but Yosemite green, gorgeous. All right. Uh, and then the last two, I have uh, Tasha Midori, which I think must be named after the booze, which is apparently this color, apparently, which is this color. Uh, I've seen it in person. It's not just apparent. And then uh, Twisby's Emerald Green, which I haven't actually gotten a chance to use yet. I need to, I need to break into that set, but I haven't really done it much, which looks like it's going to be lighter. I can't tell what this thing's going to be like because you get this very, very light shading here, a little bit of sheen through there where the ink was heavy and around the edges. And then like this is kind of a bluer green than this. Uh, I think Tasha Midori is closer. But there you go. All right, so that's a lot of things. It's a lot of, I know it's a lot to take in, but there you go. All right, so this has been Mont Blanc Irish Green. Thanks for watching, folks. Uh, if you are not subscribed, do please subscribe. That would be dope. Uh, like, leave a comment, hit that bell so you're notified when we go live. And I post new videos, I guess, but when we go live. Uh, and uh, check out Mont Blanc uh, Irish Green from, oh, this is from Sandra. That's fun. And check out Mont Blanc Irish Green wherever you buy Mont Blanc inks. Um, and uh, I'll see y'all later. Peace out.